Every day that passes, the world is in worse shape. The glum looking man you see on the screen is Derek Jensen. Derek is the best selling author of several non fiction books, including The Culture of Make Believe and A Language Older Than Words. His books deal with topics such as surveillance, child abuse, the environment, and something he calls civilization. It's statements like these that make him so controversial. They're thinking of raising the Shasta Dam in California, and the reason that Feinstein gave, Senator Feinstein gave, was um, it is Californians' God-given right to water their lawns. You know, there is no way to argue with that, um, <laughs> except with explosives. That was Mr. Jensen in 2006, the same year he published a two-volume set called Endgame. In Endgame, he argues that there is an urgent need to bring down civilization. If people would have brought down civilization 100 years ago, people in the Pacific Northwest could still eat salmon. There's gonna be people sitting along the Columbia 50 years from now, and they're glowing for one thing, but they'll be starving to death, and they'll be saying, I'm starving to death, because you didn't take out the dams that killed salmon. And those dams were used for barging and for electricity, for aluminum smelters, for beer cans. So, God damn you. He lays out his case against civilization by enumerating 20 premises. Due to time limitations and the fact that most people would not tolerate a 20 hour movie, we will explore five of these premises and accompany them with real life examples. Industrial civilization, civilization itself, but especially industrial civilization, is not and can never be sustainable. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out that any way of life that's based on the use of non-renewable resources won't last. Civilization is a way of life characterized by the growth of cities. So you've got groups of people living in a dense enough population that the local land base cannot support them. What that means is you have to get your basic resources from somewhere else because you've used them up where you live. So you're going to go out into the countryside and gather up whatever it is you want, bring it back in. If you require the importation of resources, what that means is you've denuded the landscape of that particular resource. There's no way that in the long term you can continue to uh, destroy uh, the land that you need for your survival uh, or the waters that you need to drink and expect to continue to live. How do you develop a mountain? Well, you reduce it to useful products. So you pound it up, turn it into matrix for road beds, or you turn it into ballast for rail lines, or you turn it into the sort of coarse gravel that's used in heavy construction. When you're done developing the mountain, the mountain no longer exists, and you can apply that same principle to the rest of the uh, ecosphere. If you have a finite amount of anything, if you start using it, eventually you use it up. And so it would seem that if your entire culture is based on, I don't know, let's take a random resource, oil, that you would think about what's going to happen when the oil runs out. We found energy resources 
that have allowed us to escape some of the uh, kinds of limits that previous cultures have had to face much more quickly. It used to collapse because they ran out of resources, easily accessible resources, um, the limit being the distance that people could travel with things like horses or other pack animals. That ended with the, the, the beginning of the fossil fuel age. Now they can go all over the planet and take what they want. So globalization has only accelerated this um, tremendously destructive process. We've poured our, uh, our wealth into building an infrastructure for daily life that has no future. I do think that the oil problem is going to accelerate within the next uh, three to five years, maybe even sooner. The numbers indicate that we've probably peaked in global production. Where do you find the break from that? I mean, it's all of it is a, is a giant machine or ensemble that just moves forward. Technology, for example, never takes a step back. This, this whole thing just keeps going like a cancer. I don't know of any civilization that's been sustainable. I don't believe there ever has been one. Technology really in its essence is our culture's determination that comes from certain philosophical and historical sources that we will be nothing else but more relentlessly technological. There is no like clean green path to living at a lifestyle that um, we are all used to in industrialized nations. This way of life is over. Civilizations are often cutting their own throats very visibly, very obviously, but they just keep on doing it. It's my belief that the human dimension of this is self-extinguishing and it'll take other species with it as it is doing demonstrably all around us right now.